Alright guys, welcome back. So now we are going to get this get into the super exciting part of the brand new auto support system in Chudabox. And I must say it has been a pleasure to use and um, it's pretty much going to cover 90% of uh, your support requirements on uh, most models. So nothing is 100% yet from uh, what I've seen and what I've used and I have used a lot of uh, programs for making support uh, for 3D prints so uh, yeah so from my testing this has been great and uh, I will post a video of the actual print that I generated using uh, auto supports on this particular model so without further ado let's get started so once you've loaded in the model your STL just hit the second tab on the top right which looks like support and here are your support customization settings and also your auto support settings so um, I am going to again flash up my settings uh, for what I found to work best for auto support. And so these represent the different tabs, different menus that you find in the auto support, uh, in the support context. Alright, so when you launch the program for the first time, it is going to give you the default settings for support. Now, as I've shown you already my custom settings, uh, you let's go through and then update these settings and um, see how it looks when compared to the auto settings, the default settings. So, I am just going to do a run a auto support option for uh, the heavy preset. You just simply need to click either the platform or the or button and I'll explain the differences in a second. Takes a little while to think about it, of course, so you be patient and give it time. So by default, straight out of the box, this is what you're going to get for auto support. Now it's not bad, not bad at all. And uh, the new raft system they have set up here is uh, quite good, and it does remind me of the uh, preform um, support system set up. The only thing that I have suggested to the development team is to add vent holes to the bottom here so there you don't get any suction issues. I'm going to go through now and just update the default settings to match my uh, custom settings. I have suggested to the Chudubox team to add presets uh, so we can save our own custom presets in this menu. It may come in the next version, so that will be handy. So for the raft, I am not going to use the raft. So we're just going to change that to none. The bottom, we're going to change this to prism, which is basically a cylinder. Uh, touch diameter, we will put that through to 10. We'll put thickness to 1.3. The model contact shape we'll leave at sphere 1 and we'll change the contact depth to 0.4. For the middle, we're going to change this to 1.3. Leave that at cylinder. For the top, 
we're going to change the contact shape to sphere and we are going to change the depth to 0.4 cone for connection shape 0.6 for the diameter for the lower diameter and 3 contact length for the auto support I'm going to update this to 20 40 and 45 so let's hit so let me just uh, explain the difference between platform and all if you hit the auto supports on the platform, it's just going to generate supports going to the build plate on the bottom. It will not add any internal supports or any supports contacting the model from part to part. Alright, so now we have generated the auto supports uh, using my custom settings. Uh, I'm just going to show you a few new key features of the support system which uh, makes it my opinion uh, much better than the previous incarnation of uh, Chi2. So the first thing you'll notice is that the tips of the support uh, now has a little sphere in front of it. So this is really good for easy removal of your supports without chipping off parts of your model. So previously the uh, cone will go straight into the model and when you try and cut the cone off the model most of the time you will end up uh, pulling chunks off your actual piece along with it. So what this sphere does, it lets you remove the support with a break point that is from here. So this guarantees a consistent, um, consistent uh, artifact basically when you remove the uh, supports. So this allows for much easier um, cleanup and post processing because once the supports is removed from this breakpoint, all you need to do is go back in here with a sharp X-Acto knife and just simply trim off the little sphere. So that sphere is enabled by this top contact shape. Now you can remove it. When you set it to none, it will go back to the old setting where the tip goes straight into the model. But I, in my opinion, this sphere contact shape is much, much better. Uh, and you can set the size and the contact depth. So this has worked well for me so far cleanup has been super quick and easy. Bearing in mind that you will have a little sphere on the model which you will need to trim off and uh, which means obviously then don't put your supports in super highly detailed areas uh, because you may need to uh, sand it afterwards. Right, so now if we do the auto supports on all This should be the option that uh, you, you use all the time. You will see the results will now include supports going from the part to the part. And also internal supports for any hollowed uh, objects. Cool. So now you can see Chi2 has added additional supports on these areas going from part to part so in most instances you'll want to enable this um, you don't just want supports going to the base so you can see here it's done a pretty good job and what I do like about uh, these new internal supports is the bottom connection so it doesn't just use one single connection point 
it uses three, which just greatly reduces the chance of uh, these supports breaking off at the tip. Um, and I find this a very, very good feature and reliable feature for uh, generating internal supports. So the other excellent new feature added to the new cheetah box is the slope angle uh, indicator. So you can see some part of the model here has been highlight highlighted in red. And this is an indicator that uh, the angle of the part has, uh, is on the threshold of your angle setting. <coughs> Excuse me in the order support options. So I'm just going to remove this so we can get a clearer view of it. So what the order support does is it detects the angle of your part and then distributes uh, points and then adds supports from there. So to change this angle, we just simply update it by Increasing or decreasing the angle parameter. So this is a great visual indicator on uh, where your part needs support. And you know if order supports failed to uh, add supports in some parts that are red, then uh, it's a really good in visual indicator for you to go in and add some manual support. So auto supports will get you, you know, 90% there and then the rest 10% if you want a perfect print. Um, look for these red areas and if you find that uh, it's too steep, you can always add manual supports in there. So talking about manual supports, these three buttons allow you to add, delete, or edit supports. So let's look at adding supports. Make sure that's clicked and then hover over a part of the model that you want to add manual supports for. Um, so this has been greatly updated from the previous version. It's uh, just so much faster, so much easier to use in my opinion. much more responsive and you can see we still have the island outline indicator which is great for detecting islands for example so if we hover over this section here you can see that this will be an island so this is at a point where you will need to add supports So Tutorbox is intelligent enough to uh, add either internal or base supports based on your selection. For example, if we look over here, so this is a place where we need to add supports. So by adding a manual support here, it's going to add it uh, onto the model itself. Obviously, this would be too far to try and add a support going to the base, going outside it. And if you accidentally selected more than one support that you don't want to delete, just go back into Add Supports and then go back into Delete. It will uh, clear your selection. So yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good for adding manual supports as well as auto supports. So there are quite a lot of customization options available. Uh, I highly suggest just going through and having a play around with these. And you know, supports theory um, and practical application does take a fair bit of experience and uh, it, it's not something that you'll master straight away. 
So different and obviously different model types. Um, well, dif differ uh, in the types of supports that's required. So it's all about experimentation and experience. Don't get discouraged if uh, you know your support fails on a print. It's very typical for that to happen. Um, but I highly suggest running, uh, copying my custom support settings and then running a auto, all auto supports. Taking a look at what the auto support does and then modifying or adding supports uh, to give it more strength.